All right, and we are live. Good evening po sa inyong lahat back there in the Philippines. And of course, it's a beautiful Sunday morning here in the U.S. And of course, we welcome you back for our uh, discussion tonight for general education and also for professional education, all those items that uh, we had yesterday. Okay, now uh, let me go over a few things first before we start. Okay, so again, we are going to start with our general education discussion. This is 20 items from yesterday's um, live stream. Okay, so we start with general education. Please don't forget to like our video. If you're watching us on YouTube, please do like our video. If this is your first time to watch us, then make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, Guru Pinoy. There's a lot of videos there that can help you pass the let. If you're watching us on Facebook, then make sure that you um, react to this video, heart this video, like this video, share this video, start a watch party, tag your friends, share this with the groups that you have joined so that we can reach out to more people and we can help them pass the lead. Okay, so again, we are back for general education. Okay, make sure that your uh, notebooks are ready, your answers are ready, and we are going to start checking your work. All right, we start with question number one, general education. Okay, question was, what is the molecule that allows plants to capture energy from sunlight? Now, we've already talked about this last week. No? Last week, meron po tayong uh, question about photosynthesis. You know that photosynthesis is a process through which plants make their own food. Okay, so photosynthesis is a process through which plants make their own food. They use sunlight. Okay, the light energy, radiant energy coming from the sun. Your uh, reactants are carbon dioxide and water. Okay, and of course, through the presence of chlorophyll, chlorophyll, the green pigment in plants, it is the one, this is the pigment that harnesses the light energy coming from the sun. Okay, and so the plants are able to produce oxygen and sugar. Sugar here is glucose, that's C6H12O6, which is also a starch. Okay, and then uh, our question last week was, what is the waste product of photosynthesis? We said it's oxygen because this is not used by the plants. It is just given off back to the atmosphere, but of course your oxygen is very important for us animals because this is what we breathe in. Okay, but for number one, of course, the correct answer is chlorophyll. Okay, chlorophyll po is the correct answer. That's letter D for number one. Now, um, ATP here is adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate po is the energy that we have in our cells. Okay, but the correct answer here would be letter D. Chlorophyll ang malakas, sabi ni Ma'am Mylene Pontilias. Okay, so letter D, tama po kayo. All right, now we go to number two. This is still in science. A human arm, a bat's wing, and a seal's flipper are examples of, is it analogous organs, embryonic organs, homologous organs, or vestigial organs? What's your answer for number two? Ano po yung answer niyo for number two? Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Now, some of you are answering C. Meron din namang D. Okay, so again, a human arm, a bat's wing, and a seal's flipper are examples of letter A, analogous organs, embryonic organs, letter C, homologous organs, or letter D, vestigial organs. Now, uh, we have three types of organs in our anatomy, okay? But the answer here would be letter C, that's homologous organs, okay? So homolo homologous organs is the correct answer, okay? Back at homologous organs. Let's go over the different slides that we have here. Okay, so this is your homologous organs. These are similar in structure and share a common origin, but may be adapted to perform different functions. So you have your examples here. Okay, the different limbs that we have, these are homologous organs. So yung uh, paa ng dog, paa ng horse, okay, yung kamay ng human, bat swing, the flippers of your dolphin, yan po yung nakikita natin dito sa ating um, question, a human arm, a bat swing, and the seal's flipper are all examples of homologous organs. Kaya homologous organs pong ating sagot. Okay, similar in structure, share a common origin, but may be adapted to perform different functions. Okay, of course, iba-iba yung functions nila, dolphins flippers. Of course, this is um, helping them in swimming. Okay, yung dog's feet naman, of course, 
pag naglalakad sila, yung human arm, iba din naman yung function niya. Okay? So, it is adapted to perform different functions, but they are similar in structure and they share a common origin. Now, ano naman yung analogous organs? Okay, when you say analogous organs, these are those that have evolved separately but look alike because they are adapted to perform the same function. Okay, so they have evolved separately pero the same po yung kanilang appearance because yung function nila is similar. Okay, similar, not just similar, but the same. One example of this would be, of course, the wings of insects and birds. Okay, so analogous organs po. Hindi diverse yung functions nila, hindi iba-iba yung, hindi sila adapted to perform different functions. They have exactly the same function. Okay, kaya analogous organs yung tawag sa kanila. Ano naman yung vestigial organs? Vestigial organs are those organs found in some living things that do not perform any functions. Wala silang function. They simply show an evolutionary relationship with other living things. Your example for this would be your cocci. Okay, cocci or tailbone, tawag dito sa ilo-ilo is yung pigtot. Okay, yung pigtot natin, hindi ko alam kung ang tawag sa Tagalog. And this is just a remnant of a lost tail. Remember, we were believed, the early humans were believed to have tails. Just like uh, the primates, no? So, uh, sabi nga, yung coxa, yung pigtot natin, wala na siyang function. Remnant na lamang siya ng evolutionary tail that we had, that humans had before. Okay? So, that's your vestigial organs. All right? But the correct answer, of course, would be letter C, homologous organs for number two. Okay? Now, we go to number three. An important endocrine gland that is shaped like a bow tie and located in the neck is called letter A, pituitary gland, letter B, adrenal gland, letter C, parathyroid gland, or letter D, thyroid gland. What's your answer for number three? Again, please don't forget to share our video. Start a watch party. Tag your friends. So that we can reach out to more people. Okay, no, karamihan sa inyo, your answer is letter D. And of course, the correct answer here would be letter D. Okay, so letter D po is the correct answer for number three. That's your thyroid gland. Now, let's go to uh, the next slides that we have here. Okay, now, these are the location of the major endocrine glands that we have. When you say endocrine glands, these are the glands in the body that um, keep their, their secretions within the body. Okay, kung ano may sinisiklit nila, nasa loob lamang ng body natin. Hence, the term endocrine. And of course, their secretions are called hormones. Okay, tinatawag natin hormones yung mga secretions nila. Alright, so you have the different glands here. Sa brain mo, of course, you find the pineal gland, the hypothalamus, and the pituitary gland. The master gland is called your pituitary gland because it is believed to control the rest of the functions of the different glands. Hypothalamus, of course, is the one that, uh, that controls your emotions, your hunger. Okay, that's your hypothalamus. Your thyroid gland is found in the neck. Okay, so this is the thyroid gland. Or parathyroid glands naman is on the dorsal aspect, sa likod na bahagi po ng inyong, inyong uh, thyroid gland. So your thyroid gland is actually the one that uh, affects your, your neck, no? So pag meron kang goiter, it is due to some defects in your thyroid gland. Now, you also have your thymus here, sa chest na siya. Adrenal gland, okay, nandito sila. And of course, uh, yung adrenal gland mo nasa kidney yan, pancreas mo. It also secretes some hormones, ovaries for females, and of course, testes for uh, your male. Okay, so these are all glands. They are all secreting hormones. And of course, we know for ovaries, meron tayong mga estrogen, progesterone, lahat po yan galing sa ating ovaries. Testes naman, uh, they also have their testosterone. Okay, so these are hormones that are secreted by our sex endocrine glands. Okay, now... Uh, what are some of the functions of the different glands? So we have, so you have the different glands here. This is the hormone that they secrete. Ito po yung hormone, yung substance na sinisikrit nila, no? yung chemical substance na sinisikrit nila. These are the target organs that they have. Uh, pag sinabi mong target organs, this is how they function or to, or, uh, to where they function. And of course, they have the specific function here. Okay, so yung pituitary gland mo, you have several hormones that is excreted by your, secreted by your uh, pituitary gland. Okay, now, 
uh, naka nagfa-function din siya to to control your ovaries, your kidneys, etc. Kaya nga tinatawag natin yung pituitary gland natin as the master gland because it is um it is controlling many other glands. Thyroid gland mo, this one that's also for metabolic rate. Uh adrenal glands mo is for fight or flight hormone yung uh, yung adrenaline rush na tinatawag natin no from adrenal gland siya. Pancreas, of course, for your blood sugar levels, it is the one that secretes your insulin. Okay, nagko-control ng blood sugar le level natin. And of course, you have your ovaries. I've already mentioned this, your estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone coming from your testes. Okay, so these are the different glands that we have in our body. Okay, but the correct answer, of course, there was number uh, for number three, that's letter D. That's your thyroid gland. So thyroid gland is the correct answer for letter D. Okay, now we proceed to question number four. Which of the following is an organism that feeds on necrotic and decaying matter? Okay. All right, now can you please send me your answer for number four? Mm -hmm. Iba iba karamihan sa inyo, your answer is letter D. Dito sa YouTube, karamihan, their answer is letter D. Okay, now which of the following is an organism that feeds on necrotic and decaying matter? Of course, when you say necrotic, these are organisms that are dying, okay? Dying almost dead, okay? Or, or even the dead organisms, decaying matter. Ito naman, syempre, patay na, no? Dedo na, okay? So, nag-dedicay na siya. It's already going through the composition. Is it your vulture? Letter B, algae. Letter C, parakeet. Letter D, yes. Now, the correct answer here, of course, is letter A, vulture. Your vultori, okay? So, yan po yung vulture natin. Kinakain niya yung mga patay na animals na kinatay, for example, pinatay ng leon, pinatay ng tigre, yung vulture would be the one that would, ito yung tuna ng vulture, hindi ko alam paano siya sa, sa Tagalog, no? Siya yung um, pumupunta sa mga pagkain na, sa mga animals sa pinatay, especially ng mga, ng mga um, predators natin. And of course, they feed on their decaying matter. Okay, so that's your vulture. Vulture po is a correct answer, letter A. Now, ang algae po, algae mo, this is a type of um, protease. And ang algae po kasi, they, they, they have the capacity to make their own food. So photosynthetic sila. They, they undergo photosynthesis. Parakeet is a type of bird. Okay, so type of bird po siya. So um, it's usually a herbivore, no? Herbivore siya. And uh, kumakain din naman siya ng mga worms. So omnivore, no? Kumakain siya ng worms and even uh, leaves of plants. Ang yeast mo naman, of course, you know your yeast, uh, they feed on sugar and carbohydrates. Okay? Kaya siya ginagamit sa pagbibake, no? Sa pangisal, pagbibake mo, you use your yeast. Okay? The correct answer for number four is letter A, vulture. Okay? Vulture po. Okay, now we go to number four, the asexual reproduction which occurs when a new organism develops from an outgrowth is called blank. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we have the different uh, types of asexual reproduction here. And what do you think is the correct answer? Okay, so karamihan B... Okay, tama po kayo. That's budding. Okay, so letter B, budding is the correct answer. One example here is hydra. Okay, so yung hydra po, ano yung bang nangyayari? There is just a growth of bud. There's a growth of the bud. And of course, the bud develops mouth and tentacles and it detaches from the parent, becomes independent. Okay, so this is what you call budding, budding. Hindi po budding ha, hindi po budding, that's budding. Now, of course, we know that fertilization is a sexual form. Sexual po siya na klase ng reproduction. And so this is not the correct answer. We're looking for asexual reproduction, okay? In fertilization kasi, you need your sex cells, your egg cells, and your sperm cells to unite. No, to, to, to have a union so that uh, the embryo may be formed. Fission naman, this is in bacteria. 
we usually call this binary fission. The bacterial cell would just divide itself by two, by two, by two, by two. Kaya mabilis silang dumami, no? Kaya mabilis silang mag-form ng colony. Grafting, of course, alam nyo to, lalo na pag kayo ay isang plantita at plantito, no? Grafting, eh, meron kang mature na part ng isang plant and you uh, merge it, you merge it, you combine it with a younger plant. Okay? So kahit na maliit pa lamang yung puno, meron na siyang bunga. That's grafting naman, all right? But of course, for number five, the correct answer is letter B. Okay, now we go to number six. What measure of central tendency can best describe the, the size of t-shirts commonly worn by teenagers? Okay, ano kaya yung tamang sagot? Okay, the correct answer here, of course, your hint, okay, your hint here is common, commonly worn, okay, commonly and this is, of course, the, the mode, okay? Mode po, the letter A mode. Commonly worn. Remember your uh, three measures of central tendency, the mean, median, and mode. If you haven't watched our video on them yet, make sure that you go to uh, YouTube later and watch our video, the mean, median, and the mode. Of course, when you say mean, this is the average, okay? This is the average uh, of all the scores. Median naman is the middle most score. And ang mode mo naman, this is the most frequently occurring score. And yung hint mo dito sa number six is commonly worn, meaning eh, uh, ginagamit ng mas nakararami. And so the correct answer would be letter A, that's the mode mode okay so mode po letter b naman range this is not a measure of central tendency this is for a, a, a part of the measures of dispersion okay dispersion na siya, or variability the range of course is um computed by subtracting your lowest value from your highest value so highest value minus lowest value that is the range okay so the correct answer is letter a the mode number seven if a die is rolled, what is the probability of getting a number divisible by two? Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number seven? Okay, no sabi dito yung die is rolled. Die po is the singular form of dice. Okay, so this is a singular form of dice. What is the probability of getting a number divisible by two? Now, when you are getting the probability, of course, you divide an event with the total number of possible outcomes. Okay, divide an event with the total number of possible outcomes. Now, sabi dito dapat, uh, what is the pos the probability? No, kinukuha mo probability of getting a number divisible by two. Okay, divisible by two. Now, ano ba yung mga numbers na meron tayo sa die? Meron tayong one, two, three, four, five, hanggang six. Tama? Now, uh, out of those six numbers, what are the numbers that are divisible by two? Your numbers that are divisible by two, of course, would be two, four, six. Okay, two, four, and six are all divisible by two. And we say divisible by two, pag di-divide mo sila by two, wala pong remainder. Okay, and so we have three numbers that are divisible by two. And so there is a total of three possibilities out of the six total outcomes. That's three out of six, three, six, or the simplest term for this would be one half. And so the correct answer is letter A, that's one half, Paul. Okay, so letter A, one half is the correct answer. Now, tandaan po ninyo when your math question is asking you for pr probability, tandaan po if there is only a die, isang die lamang, your denominator would always be six. Okay, so may anim na possibilities if it's just a die. If there are uh, two dies, your possibility would be 36. So 36 po yung total, not just 6, but 36. So 6 times 6. If your probability question is asking for a deck of cards, then of course, your your denominator would be 52. 52 po yung total number of deck of cards. So may lamang, no? May advantage yung mga sugarol dito. Okay? So yung mga nagsusugal, yung mga nagtutong, it's medyo advantageous pag may probability problems tayo. Okay? So number 7 po, the letter A, one half. All right, now we go to number eight. This is still in math. In a physics test, nine students obtained the following scores, 80, 86, 78, 88, 90, 82, 76, 84, 92. What is the median score? Okay, ano kaya yung median score? Okay, so again, 
hinahanap natin dito is the median score. As I have mentioned, when you say mean, that's the average. Pag sinabi mong median, that's the middlemost score. Pag sinabi mo namang mode, that's the most frequently occurring score. Now, you are given the grades of nine students, the scores of nine students. How are you going to get the median score? Unang-una po, sinabi natin the median score is the middlemost score. But before you get the middlemost score, hindi po siya ganito lang yung itsura ng inyong scores. Dapat is you arrange them from smallest to biggest. Okay? So from the smallest number to the biggest number. So we try to arrange them first at 76, 70, 80, 82, 84, 86, 88, 90, 92. And then of course, you get the middlemost score. Now, swerte tayo dito because we have an odd number of scores. Meron tayong nine scores. And so that means meron talaga tayong pinakagitnang number. Okay? If you are looking at our score distribution here, we can have one, two, three, four numbers to the left. And we also have one, two, three, four numbers to the right. And of course, the middlemost score that we have here is 84. Okay, so 84 po yung middlemost score natin. Apat na numbers sa kanyang left and apat na numbers din sa kanyang right. And so, our median would be 84. So again, unang-una po yung kailangan yung gawin is to arrange them from smallest to biggest muna. Yung numbers mo from smallest to biggest, and then you get the middlemost score for your median. Now, what if you have 10 scores instead of, of 9 scores? No? Pag 10 scores ka, meaning meron kang even number of scores, okay, kunwari may 93 dito or may 94 dito sa uh, last part ng yung score distribution, what you do is you get the two middlemost scores average. Okay, so kukunin, po, kukunin mo po yung average ng two middlemost scores mo. Okay, and that would be your median. All right? So again, number eight, that would be letter A, 84 is the correct answer. Okay, now we go to number nine. This is social studies. And dami natin social studies na items. Sir Migs, thank you so much for your ayuda. Thank you po. Okay. Aha, uh -huh. karamihan sa mga nasa YouTube natin. The answer is letter A. This is social studies. Okay, kahit sa Facebook, letter A there. Through the Galleon trade from 1565 to 1815, the Philippines has extended contacts with, the correct answer, of course, would be letter A. That's Mexico. Okay, because your Galleon trade was done between Manila and Acapulco, Mexico. Okay, Acapulco po yung lugar ni Talia. Okay, so letter A is the correct answer. Okay, now we go to number 10. The fundamental right invoked by fighting the writ of Amparo is the right to self-defense, the right to due process, the right to life, liberty, and security, the right to be defended by a public attorney. What's the correct answer for number 10? Thank you so much, ma'am. Ma'am Loyalen Bancale da Kipil for sharing our video. Okay, now many of you are answering letter C on YouTube. I've already discussed this last week. Um, yung mga iba-ibang rights natin, no? We said the, the uh, yung writ, writ of habeas corpus, pag sinabi mo writ of habeas corpus, that's the right um, to be protected from being kept, okay, in detention, from, from illegal detention. That's the writ of habeas corpus. And of course, the writ of amparo, I've already mentioned this, when you say writ of amparo, amparo there means protection. And this is letter C. Okay, so letter C is the correct answer, the right to life, liberty, and security. Protection and for you to uphold your natural rights, okay? Of course, the right to life, liberty, and security, these are all our natural rights. So the correct answer, of course, for number 10 is letter C. Letter C po ang tamang sagot. Now we go to number 11. The biggest of the seven continents of the world is, okay, what do you think is the answer? Okay, karamihan dito sa mga nasa YouTube, the answer is, their answer is letter A. Dito sa Facebook, okay, Asia din, letter A din, yung answers nila. Good evening, Sir Usman Aziz. He is one of our international students. He's watching from Pakistan. We're glad to have you back. We're at number 11 for general education. Ma'am Vils, Lofar, Bolok Bolok, thank you for sharing our video. 
Okay, that's why we we have to use English because Sir um, Sir uh, Usman is always commenting on my videos. He's always saying, "I can't understand it when you are using Filipino." Okay, so again, number eleven, the biggest of the seven continents of the world is—is is it Asia, Africa, Australia, or Europe? The correct answer is, of course, letter A. That's Asia. That is where you find the Philippines. And the rest of the Asian countries. So according to the land area, Asia is number one, then followed by Africa. Third would be North America. Then you have South America. Number five is Antarctica. Then you have Europe. And of course, the smallest continent, which is also a country, is Australia. Okay, so the correct answer is number one, that's Asia. Okay, so again, number one, po, Asia is the correct answer. All right. Now we go to number 12. Which band played the Marcha Nacional Filipino or the national anthem on June 12, 1898 during the declaration of the Philippine independence? Is it letter A, Del Monte Band? Letter B, Pangkat Kawayan ng Pateros? Letter C, Kawit Cavite Band? Or letter D, San Francisco de Malabon Band? Okay, what's the correct answer for number 12? Okay, now a lot of people on YouTube are answering letter D. Karamihan sa YouTube, letter D yung answer. Ma'am Jill Penalver, good evening po. She used to be my student now, but of course now, licensed professional teacher na. Okay, the correct answer here of course would be letter D. Letter D po yung tamang sagot na, but hindi siya, oh, it's not shaded, but the correct answer is letter D, that's San Francisco de Malabon Band. Okay, so again, that's letter D, San Francisco de Malabon Band is the correct answer for question number 12. Thank you, Ma Marilyn E. Cortez, for sharing our video. Now, this is the explanation that we have here. Julio Nakpil composed the Marangal na Dalit ng Katagalugan, the Noble Hymn of the Tagalogs which was chosen by Andres Bonifacio as the hymn of the revolution. However, the current national anthem entitled Marcha Nacional Filipina, Philippine National March, was composed by Julian Felipe. Lumalabas po yan sa let. This comes out in the let, who composed uh, the Philippine National Anthem. That would be Julian Felipe. And a well-regarded musician from Cavite Nuevo, now Cavite City, at General Aguinaldo's request. It was first played in public in Cavite, by the Banda or Banda San Francisco de Malabon after Ambrosia Rianzares Bautista read the proclamation of independence and unfurled the national flag in public. Okay, so that's Julian Felipe, your uh, composer. Okay, so that's the composer, Julian Felipe. All right, so the correct answer, of course, was letter D for question number 12. Now we go to number 13. The province in the Philippines which was called Ma'i by the Chinese in the 14th century is, okay, what's the correct answer for number 13? So dati pa, na, pa, pa man din ay nangingi alam na yung China, no? Nananakop na yung China. Meron na silang probi-probinsya na nasa Pilipinas. A lot of you are answering the letter C. Okay, and of course, the correct answer here would be letter C. That's correct. Okay, so Mindoro po is the correct answer. Ma'i was an ancient sovereign state located in what is now the Philippines. Contemporary scholars believe Ma'i was located either in Laguna de Bay, okay, Laguna de Baino, or on the island of Mindoro. Okay, so Mindoro is the correct answer. Okay, so letter C, that's Mindoro. Now we go to number 14. It illustrates a particular data series through rectangles. Okay, it illustrates a particular data series through rectangles. What's the correct answer? Is it the bar graphs, circle graphs, line graphs, pie graphs? Most of the people here on YouTube, their answer is letter A. Okay, and that's the correct answer. Your hint here is the term rectangles. It illustrates a particular data series through rectangles, and that would be your bar graphs. Okay, so letter A, bar graph is the correct answer. Now, let's take a look at the different types of graphs that we have here. Okay, here on the screen, you have the four types of common graphs. The first one is a line graph, and this is used to show trends and change. 
Okay, so if you are trying to show a certain change over a period of time or, or trend or a period of time, you need to use a line graph. So this here is an example of your line graph. So you can see the changes as it happens. This is per month. Okay, now number two, of course, your bar graph. This is using your rectangles and it shows comparison of choices. So if you are comparing different choices, the best type of graph for you to use would be your bar graph. Okay, so example that we have here is this, the nicest fruit. What's the best type of fruit? No, what's the favorite fruit for different people? And so you have apple, orange, banana, kiwi, etc. You are comparing your choices and so use your bar graph. This was uh, shown in our um, question a while ago. It uses rectangles, okay? So it uses rectangles. Number three, pictograph. This one is uh, a very unique type of graph because it uses picture keys. So here you have an example, the apple sold in four months. So you have January, Feb, March, and April. Now, if there is a question about this in the lab and you're asked to interpret your picture graph or pictograph, make sure that you check the key, okay? The key or the legend. So that means here, one whole apple would be in 10 apples and half of that, of course, would be in five. So if your question is, how many apples were sold in February? Your answer, of course, would be, 40 not four okay 40 not four okay because each of these apple is worth 10 apples okay so that's your picture graph or pictograph now number four is a pie chart and this one shows the part versus whole relationship and usually in your pie chart you'd see the percentages okay so for example payday budget for households 10 percent goes to savings utility bills that's 15 percent tuition fee and school allowance is 25%, etc. Okay, so that's your pie chart. Another term for your pie chart is a circle graph. Okay, it's a circle graph. All right, so these are the different types of graphs that we have. Again, the correct answer for your previous question was letter A, bar graphs. It shows your data series through rectangles. So bar graphs fall would be the correct answer. Now, what about number 15? This is still with regards to your graphs. Okay, what do you think is the correct answer for number 15? Mom Julie Beth Pagal Tumagna, thank you for tagging your friends. All right, number 15, it can be used to show the progress in academic grades over four, uh, four quarters. What's the correct answer here? Many of you are answering letter B. Okay, kahit sa Facebook, your answer is also letter B, and that is the correct choice because, of course, it is going to show the progress, the change, or the trend over a period of time. We've already uh, explained this to you, the different types of graphs and their different uses. So the correct answer is letter B. That's the line graph. Bar graph is used for different choices. It uses horizontal lines or vertical, uh, not lines, horizontal rectangles, vertical uh, rectangles, pupwede. Line graph is to show trends or change. Pie graph, of course, is to show the relationship between um, the part and the whole. And the circle graph, circle graph and pie chart are the same, okay? Pie graph and circle graph are the same. Okay, so number 16, we proceed. It is the process of storing, recovering, and disseminating recorded data through the computer. Is it letter A, information technology? Letter B, information retrieval? Letter C, information utilization? Letter D, information science? Okay, now many people on YouTube are answering letter B. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this one... This is the process of storing, recovering, disseminating recorded data through the computer. The correct answer, of course, would be letter B. That's information retrieval. Information retrieval is the correct answer. And this is actually the definition of the term. Okay, that's information retrieval. So storing, recovering, and disseminating recorded data through the computer. That's letter B. Letter B po is the correct answer. Okay, now we go to number 17. Social network service available through a computer is Wikipedia, Google, iPad, Facebook. Okay, so Sir Sean has transferred from YouTube to Facebook. Mom Conch in Fiesta, thank you for sharing our video, ma'am. 
Okay, now many of you are answering letter D. Of course, your hint here is social. Okay, social media, social network service available through a computer. The correct answer, of course, would be letter D. Alam niyo to, that's Facebook. Wikipedia is just um, some references, no? some, some uh, articles that are written. Google, of course, it's a search engine. And, of course, iPad, this is just a device. Okay, it's correct answer. That's letter D. 